Greetings and welcome to the Greater Mount Calvary Missionary Baptist Church. We are glad you have joined us for another Wednesday night word at the Greater Mount Calvary Missionary Baptist Church. It's a blessing that the Lord has allowed us to assemble again for another uh, Wednesday night word. We want to say to you uh, this evening, Happy New Year to many of you that we have maybe have not seen or spoken to, but Happy New Year to you from the Greater Mount Calvary Missionary Baptist Church, and we wish in God's blessing and favor on your life and your family for this year, that you will get everything that belongs to you from the Lord, amen, and God will give you an overflow of blessings, amen, that you can have and share in the great blessings of the Lord. We're just glad to be able to come to you in the name of the Lord and worship God in spirit and in truth. For God is doing great and awesome things. Our church is located at 3835 Whitewater Road, right here in the city of Valdosta, Georgia. That's 3835 Whitewater Road, right here in the city of Valdosta, Georgia. We invite you to come and be a part of our worship experience at Mount Calvary. We have morning worship every Sunday at 8 a.m. Every Sunday at 8 a.m. And then we have our Wednesday night word online at 7 o'clock p.m. each and every Wednesday. And also our noonday prayer, amen, our conference call noonday prayer every Wednesday at 12 noon. You can join them for the conference call prayer, amen. We just glad that you have joined us for this evening and on tonight. Just a few announcements as uh, we continue to go on. Just a few announcements we want to share with you. On Monday, uh, January the 15th, the Martin Luther King Youth Showcase at 11 a.m. at the Van Oster High School Performing Arts Center, located 3101 Barack Obama Boulevard, Van Oster, Georgia. My Carver Youth Ministries uh, on program with presentations and spiritual dance. That's the Mount Carey Youth Ministry is on program for this youth showcase at the Van Austin High School Performing Arts Building on this coming Monday, January the 15th at 11 a.m. So we invite you, encourage you to go out and encourage our youth from all over the city and surrounding areas doing this special uh, youth showcase program for the Martin Luther King uh, event. That's uh, January 15th at 11 a.m. At the High, Van Austin High School Performing Arts Center, located at 3101 Barack Obama Boulevard, Van Austin, Georgia. Also, on uh, December the 8th, 2023, uh, Brother Nathan and Sister Felicia Edwards lost their home due to an electrical fire. This is their testimony. In spite of, in spite of, we don't look like what we've been through. We are still in disbelief. That we lost everything, even in this, we are trusting God. Their home church, the Greater Mount Carey Missionary Baptist Church, and the church family members, and right off to Georgia, has already been a blessing to them. And many continue to bless them in various ways. Coco and the Chosen Ones, in which Brother Nathan Edwards is a member, along with other quartets, uh, musical groups, and singers, desire to be a blessing to the family with a benefit program and a concert on Saturday, January the 20th, that's January the 20th, 2024 at 4 o'clock p.m. The program will be at the Mount Calvary Universal Holiness Church. That's at the Mount Calvary Universal Holiness Church, located at 290 Salem Road Street in Morvin, Georgia. That's 290 Salem Street in uh, Morvin, Georgia. That program is going to be again uh, January, Saturday, January the 20th at 4 o'clock p.m. That's a benefit concert program for Brother Nathan Edwards and Sister Felicia Edwards, which are part of my Calvary Church here in Valdosta, Georgia. And last but not least, one more announcement for tonight. Please be our special guest. As Mount Carey celebrate our Family and Friends Day 2024 on Sunday, January 28th at our 8 a.m. service. Yes, our Family and Friends Day on Sunday, January 28th 
at 8 a.m. Our theme, family and friends coming together one more time. St. John 15, verses 12 through 17. There'll be a special gift for the member who brings the most guests. Let's fill the house and pack the pews for Jesus in praise and in worship. So we're excited about our Family and Friends Day, which will be the fourth Sunday. That's Sunday, January 28th at 8 a.m. during our morning worship hour. We invite you to come out and be a part of this grand Family and Friends Day. So we're glad that you're here with us on this evening to share in our Wednesday word night word. Amen. That God can give you insight in his word. God bless you. Let us go to the Lord in prayer at this time. Heavenly Father, God, we just thank you, Lord. We just give your name to praise God. We just give your name to glory. And Lord, we just give your name to honor. We thank you for all the many blessings you have bestowed upon us, Father God. We thank you for these that are watching on tonight. We thank you for those that will uh, come on in and watch later, Father God. We just give your name to praise and give your name to glory and to honor, Father God. We pray now, Lord, that you will just open up our understanding in your word on tonight. Give us clarity and understanding in your word that it might help and strengthen somebody along on their Christian journey. And Lord, we'll give your name to praise and give your name to glory and we'll give your name to honor. We thank you for it and we give you praise and we give you glory and honor. Lord, look on those that may be standing in need of special prayer. Whatever the need may be, oh Father God, we ask you right now, Father, to meet the need. Heal, set free, the devil right now, God. Turn it around. Work a miracle in their behalf. In the mighty name of Jesus, we give your name the praise and we give your name the glory and the honor. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. God bless you. Amen. Tonight, amen, we're going to, amen, give honor to God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, to our ministerial staff at Mount Calvary, to their uh, spouses, to my lovely spouse, Lady Evelyn Diane Vincent, to our deacon, deaconess, mother, saints, and friends. We're just glad, amen, that you have joined us tonight for a Wednesday night where we honor you all in your respective places that you have joined with us and been a part of this Wednesday night word. Malachi, amen, 3, 8. Through 10. Malachi, the third chapter, verses 8 through 10, is our basic scripture for tonight. That's Malachi, the third chapter, verses 8 through 10. Amen. Malachi, verses chapter 3, verses 8 through 10. It simply says, Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But you say, Wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. Ye are cursed with the curse, for ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. Verse 10 says, Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house, and prove me now herewith, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive. Amen. Verse 10, Bring ye all the tithes, unto the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house, and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts. If I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. I want to talk with you from the subject tonight, my giving, my giving. Amen. Talking about a personal relationship and giving tonight, your personal giving, my giving, my giving. And uh, let's, let's understand that uh, oftentimes I don't really talk much about uh, money or giving in a sense of sermons or a lot of Bible so that I may talk about it once or twice and within a uh, calendar year. And I thought that it uh, first sit down this year would be appropriate to talk with you about my giving, meaning your giving, my giving. Make it personal tonight that it is about your giving, my giving, our subject. Let's start the year outright by giving God what belongs to him. Start the year outright giving God what belongs to him. A lot of folks like to make a lot of New Year resolutions and things of that sort. But I I, I, I want to tell you tonight that uh, it's nothing wrong. I'm not saying something wrong with that and not to do that, but let's just do what we need to do. 
and what the Bible requires us to do, and we'll be all right either, amen, in, 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 the, end, in the end game. Let us start the year out right by giving God what belongs to him. I don't want to get in your pocketbook tonight. I don't want to get in your purse, your wallet, or your pocket in general tonight. I want to get in your heart, your heart for God. That's what we want to get at in tonight, your heart for God. Because if it's in your heart to give, amen, you'll give. You know, if it's just in your pocketbook, you may not decide to open it up. But if it's in your heart to give, you will give. The word tithes mean a tenth. It represents a minimum, not a maximum of giving. It represent a minimum, but not a maximum of giving. We as followers of Jesus are called to tithe and to be generous, especially since Jesus was so generous to us. I say Jesus was generous to us. How do you say that, Pastor Vincent? Because, amen, he came, he died, he bled, was crucified and resurrected for us, and he's coming back for us. Amen. So he was generous to us. So we ought to be do the same for him, be generous unto him. Tithing is, amen, the tenth of our tithing is a minimum, a minimum, amen, of our giving. That's the small amount that God requires of us to give. What most people think is that tithing in the Old Testament principle is not for us anymore. However, my brothers and sisters, tithing can be found in three primary areas of scripture. Abraham gave a tenth in Genesis, the 14th chapter. Malachi 3.10 talks about how God validates the tithes and says to test him, in other words, try him, and give him, and that we will never outgive God. The old song the church used to sing, you can't beat God's giving no matter how hard you try. The more you give, the more he'll give unto you. Amen. So you can't beat God's giving. So Malachi 3.10 encourages us that we ought to bring our tithes to the Lord, tithes and offerings to the Lord. And God open up, amen, the windows of heaven and pour us out a blessing that we won't have room enough to receive. Amen. So you can't outgive God, but you can certainly give him what's due unto him. And then Jesus in Matthew, the 23rd chapter, around about the 23rd verse, and you can read the entire chapter, but right, right around the 23rd verse, Jesus here corrects the Pharisees for, for how they were tithing and redirects them for what they should do with the tithe instead. By doing this, we can see it's still clearly a New Testament principle. It's an old and a New Testament principle. Jesus validates it. Jesus validates it. Why? Because he discussed with them, the Pharisees, about their giving of their tithes. Amen. And make sure the heart of generosity is present when tithing, not selfish motives. Make sure your motives are right. Amen. Don't do it for show, form, or for fashion, for notoriety, but do it for the right reason because you want to give God what is due unto him. Can I make one side note tonight that uh, a lot of, I hear a lot of people say this and maybe they don't understand what they're saying, but uh, they just, they're saying it, but they don't really mean what they say. But they say, I, I pay my tithe. Well, I couldn't tell you, my brother and sister, when you pay something, it's like, it's, it's a burden. It's a, it's a debt. But when you give something, amen, you give it from your heart. You ought to give it from your heart. So I give uh, my tithes. I don't pay my tithes, but I give my tithes. We have to learn and understand the terminology because uh, when you say you pay something, that's like a burden, a weight that you have uh, against you. But when you open up your bowels, of, amen, your bowels of love and of compassion, that we begin to give. We begin to give. We begin to do it willingly. Amen. We begin to do it because we want to be obedient to God. We begin to do it because we love God. This is my giving to God. Now, I'm not concerned about nobody else's giving. I'm not concerned about what somebody else is doing or what they're not doing. But this is my time and my part to give back to God just a small 
portion, the minimum, the small portion. Do you know, amen, when you go to a restaurant, they ask you for 10, 18 percent, 20 percent. I've seen some receipts that had a suggestion for tips for 25 percent uh, on the, uh, the total amount for your bill. And, and God is only saying and asking you to give 10 percent. And if you're in a group in some restaurants, if you're in a certain size group, they automatically add a tip to your bill. You don't even give a, give a, get a choice to decide what you want to give or who you're going to give a tip or not. They automatically add it to your bill. But God don't do that. He give you an opportunity to give freely out of your heart and out of, amen, generosity of your spirit. As Jesus demonstrated grace toward us, he always raised the bar from the law. Grace raises the bar in everything. God's grace. It's amazing. Grace raises the bar. Amen. It helps us. Amen. To want to even do more for him. This means when it comes to tithing, our goal should just be to hit the tenth and be done. But rather use the tenth as a starting point. You know, there's no, uh, uh, nothing wrong with if the Lord bless you and you're giving your 10% and the Lord continue to bless you that you increase from your 10%. It's just the minimum that he says that you ought to honor him with 10%. He started you at a, at a baseline to begin to honor him uh, with your 10%. If, you, if the Lord lay on your heart to increase that, then you do that as the Lord lead and as he guide you to do that. But at least he encouraging, we encouraging you tonight that you will do the 10% of what uh, you need to do and give unto the Lord. When the Bible talks about tithes, it means 10%. Followers of Jesus are called to trust with him with their finances by faithfully returning the whole tithe, which is 10% of their income, to the storehouse, which is the church. Uh, now, if you work on a job and you receive a salary, uh, that's your income. And let me let, let you understand now, if you're not working and you retire and you're receiving a retirement uh, pay, a monthly or however it comes in, you pay the 10%, or give the 10%, give the 10% out of that uh, retirement. If you perhaps maybe not working or you receiving Social Security or some type of disability or whatever type of income that you are, the Lord has allowed and the Lord has blessed you to receive, you need to honor him by giving the 10% from whatever you receive. If you're receiving a retirement check, you're still working a job. You give tithes on both of those incomes. Don't limit God, amen, because he has not limited you. He keep on blessing you, amen. So we and want to encourage you that whatever income, whatever source of income that you're receiving, you need to give God what is due unto him uh, as unto the scripture says 10%. And so if you get $10, you tie the $1. If you receive $100, you tie $10 and so on. You know, $1,000, $100, or $2,000, $200. However your income is, that you receive when you give the 10% of that tithe off of that. And in that step of faith, through tithe, God promises, God promises that he will send a blessing your way that you won't have room enough to receive. And God is a man that will not lie. What God promised, he will certainly bring to pass. If we say he is first in our hearts, then he must be first in our finances. He must be first in our families. And he must be first in our faith. There are many blessings that go along with tithing. But it is the principle of putting God first. Putting God first. And trusting him that initiates, that brings the light, that stir up the blessings. See, by putting God first and trusting him, it initiates, it activates, it activates the blessings of God in your life. So as we, amen, begin to give our tithes, 
and begin to honor God with our time, we activate, we initiate, we, we stir up, we bring to life the blessings of God. Proverbs 3 and 9, Proverbs 3, 9 through 10, Proverbs 3, 9 through 10, it says, honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruit of all thine increase, with the first fruit of all thine increase, so shall thy bonds be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. In other words, God is saying, if you honor me with your substance, the first fruit of your substance, the first, amen. Don't some people, uh, you know, the government don't even trust you. They take out this their taxes first. They take out the, the uh, Social Security, they take out uh, the state tax, the federal tax, and, and all the other uh, withdrawals from your uh, check, or your, your insurance come out, or if you have that insurance, health insurance, whatever insurance you have, or you have some other kind of deductions in your check, that come out first. But God, they, they don't they don't trust you to uh, come in and pay it. They take it out anyway. And so God trusts you. God entrusts you to bring him. He says, bring me the tithe and the offering. God trusts you to bring him the tithe and the offering. It's up to you to bring it to the Lord. Amen. Bring it to him willingly and obediently. The first fruit. Don't give God, uh, don't give and tithe from your net pay, but tithe from your gross. That's the first fruit. When we understand, amen, net pay is what's left over after everything else has come out. But the gross is what we give God the first. We give it to God first. And we honor him first. Then he says here, he calls our bonds to be filled with plenty. That he will, amen, amen, causes our press to burst out with new wine. In other words, God is going to give us a mighty overflow. He said in the word of Malachi 3 that we heard on the night, that if we give those tithes and we give those offerings, that God will give us a overflow. We won't have room enough to receive the blessings of God. I don't know about you, but I somebody all the night, all, all to say tonight that you're looking for an overflow in 24. Amen. Looking for an overflow in 2024. I'm looking for God to give me an overflow. How do you do that? Because if you initiate it by giving of your tithes, First, giving God the first fruit. If God is truly first, we show it through our faithfulness and honoring the tithe to him. We sacrifice the first that he might bless the rest. We sacrifice the first fruit that he might bless the rest. Start out with God and end up with God. You'll be all right. Did you know that God set up a system for us where our money is actually spiritually blessed and protected? If you read down in Malachi, in a few more uh, verses right below, verse number 10, he said that God will take and rebuke the very divine. Those things that happen to other folks that could, that could happen to you, God will cause it not to happen to you because why you have honored him in giving of your tithes and your offering. God will stop that that was supposed to happen, that the enemy had set up to happen, that the enemy had tried to happen to you, but God will, amen, put a halt to it, put a stop to it. He'll put a void to it, amen. He'll stop it dead in his their tracks. Because why? If we honor God in our giving, he say he would rebuke it. He would stop it. He would put a, amen, a block to it, amen. He would cause it to be destroyed. He will cause it to be devoured. By God. Why? Just because we simply initiated, we activated the blessings of God in our lives by giving of our tithes in our offerings. Glory. Hallelujah. Thanks be unto God. I come to tell you that if you just trust him, he will do just that. Did you know that God set up a system for us where our money is actually spiritually blessed? He said that God has a system. You ain't got to worry about trying to get no rich uh, skiing thing or all this other stuff that's coming about that people try to get people to do and get involved in and, and they, they don't get what they think they're going to get out of it. But God already set up a system where you can be truly blessed. 
And not all the way is about you getting money back or getting money uh, in your bank account or money falling from the sky. No, I'm not talking about that. But God can bless us in so many ways that we sometimes don't even imagine, don't even think about, don't even don't even look at, don't even uh, uh, draw from that the blessings of God that God has blessed us and blessed not only us but bless our children and our children's children and our seed and our seeds seed God blesses them in so many ways that it comes to our he ears but do we really hear how God is really blessing us it comes to before our eyes but do we really see how God is blessing us he opened up those windows of heaven and amen we we don't even recognize that they're open and how we're getting our blessing because we take it for granted sometimes that God allowed these things, these blessings to come our way when the enemy would try to block them, stop them, prevent them, hinder them, hold them up, and destroy them. But God made them blessings come our way. And for that, we ought to give him praise and we ought to give him glory. When we look at the names of God, we see that God is El Shaddai. In other words, the Lord God Almighty, our all-sufficient and all-powerful sustainer who triumphs over every obstacle and all opposition. God, our El Shaddai. Amen. Not only is God the source of our provision and able to satisfy our every need, but he also can bless that provision too. God is our source. He's a source of our everything. We got to go back to the source. Amen. We got to go back to the source and understand that you didn't wake up this morning by yourself, but God put the breath in your body and allowed the blood to yet run warm in your veins, enable you to get up out the bed and see and go about your day to day. And for that, we ought to recognize that that God is our source. He's our source. And if and through so when I got a job and I, I got tenure and I got these many years in and I got this and I got that. But if God don't be in the plan and God don't keep it going and God don't keep you up, right? If God don't keep waking you up every morning, you won't get to where you need to get on that job. But you have to understand that God is your source. And why not honor God? By being by God being your source, by honoring Him, by giving of your tithes, giving of your tithes. I know the old church way back, Amen. Way back, way back. I'm talking about way back. They had this system of paying dues, Amen. Especially uh, sometime in the in the uh, Baptist church, Amen. About paying dues, but you know we have to understand when we know better, we do better. I said, when we know better, we do better. When we come to a better understanding, a clearer understanding, we do better. And when we do better, amen, God can truly bless us even, even the more as we honor him in giving of our tithes. Listen, I don't knock people. I don't talk about churches. I don't slander churches. I don't look down on churches that may go about, uh, getting funds and different other ways by having uh, selling dinners and fish sandwiches and all kind of things, chicken and meals and all those things and car washing, all those things. But I just honestly believe, I just honestly believe that we honor God and giving of our tithe and offering that God will open up some blessings for the local congregation. Now listen, don't misunderstand me. If somebody got some chicken dinners they selling and I'm hungry, I'm going to buy me one. Amen. I'm not going to knock nobody for doing whatever they feel that they need to do. I'm, but I'm saying what God is saying for us to do. And we give him our tithe and our offering. God said he'll bless it. And he will do, amen, bless us with room so much that we don't have room enough to receive. But I want you to understand, there's nothing wrong with some what some people do because sometimes yeah, you have to have car wash and uh, things like that for the young people to go on trips to different places, uh, amusement parks, and things like that. And for other fundraisers, they may want to go uh, to some other event or some type of uh, event that they want to go to. So that helps them sponsor them. 
you know, and my car dirty and some church is washing cars, I don't have a problem getting my car washed. I'm not condemning them. I'm not against them. But I just believe if we would just do what the Bible say do as far as giving our tithe and offering as unto the Lord, the Lord will do so much more for us. Amen. Do so much for so much more for us. But God has set up a system. God has set up a system that where he can bless us and bless us real good. But it's up to us to align ourselves with the system he put in place to see those blessings come to pass. It's up to us to align ourselves with God's system. Amen. He's not going to force it on you. He's not going to make you do it. Amen. But he's he give you an opportunity to give. Give you an opportunity to give. So you had an opportunity to give to the Lord. And so if you do that, God can give you a blessing that you stand in the need of. I don't know about you tonight, but I can stand some more blessings in my life. Amen. I can stand some more blessings in my life. To God be the glory. You may be thanking Pastor Vincent. I'm getting ready to make a few more uh, points and I'm going to close out. You may be thinking to yourself, but I can't afford to tithe. I can't afford to give my tithe to Pastor Vincent. I've already spent far more than I bring in in a month. That may be true in a lot of people's lives. They have more bills than they have, amen, money in a month. And that can happen to you. But you will never be able to afford to tithe until you tithe. I need to say that again for somebody way back in your living room, standing in the kitchen, wherever you might be in the bedroom, amen, watching us on tonight. I need to say this again. You will never be able to afford to tithe until you tithe. You'll catch that later. You may, may you will never be able to afford to tithe until you tithe. We can always afford to give if we give first. We can always afford to give if we give first. In other words, we may not be able to afford to give everything we want, but we can always afford to give. It's all about where you place your faith. Where you place your faith and place your faith in God. Tithing doesn't freeze your finances, but it frees, F-R-E-E-S, your finances. Tithing doesn't freeze, F-R-E-E-Z-E, -E, but your finances. But tithe, giving your tithe, it frees, it frees, F-R-E-E-S, amen, your finances. It frees your finances from loss, amen, and bondage, and lack, and poverty. When you give your tithe, it frees you from all those things. It don't freeze your finances, but it frees you from all those other things that causes you to be a man in life and live in like of the blessings of God. 2 Corinthians 9, 6 through 8 says, that 2 Corinthians 9, 6 through 8 says, But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man, according as he purposes in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. God, and God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that, you all, that ye, always having all sufficiency, and all things may abound to every good work. If you give sparingly, you're going to reap sparingly. If you give bountifully, if you give a lot, you will reap a lot. And every man gives according to their own heart. It's in my heart. You know the song the church sings a long time ago? It's in my heart to serve the Lord. It's got to be in your heart. My giving got to be in your heart. I, like I said earlier on tonight, I didn't come to get in your pocketbooks. I didn't come to get in your purse, but I come to get in your heart. 
and you get in your, if I get in your heart and God get in your heart and you'll have the heart of giving, you'll give. You ain't got to beg nobody when they got it in their heart to give. You ain't got to pump and prime nobody when they got it in their heart to give. They will give freely, liberally, amen. They will give bountifully, amen. They will give, amen, their purpose in their heart. They won't be grudging. They won't be mad. They won't be upset, amen. They won't have an attitude about it, but they'll give it, amen, cheerfully, amen. Give it cheerfully unto the Lord, amen. Give it, amen, with excitement unto the Lord. I'm glad that I've got something. I'm glad i got something to give back to God because God has given unto me. i got something to give unto the Lord. And then he said that, and God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that he always have all, having all sufficiency. You have everything that you need, everything that you need if you give back to the Lord. Give to the Lord. God will give you everything that you need. Just give it cheerfully, not grudgingly. Giving, amen, bountifully unto the Lord. Don't be stingy with God. God ain't been stingy with you. When you look back over your life, God has never been stingy with you. He keeps on blessing you over and over and over again. The old church used to say, the Lord is blessing me right now, right now, right now. He woke me up this morning, started me on my way. The Lord is blessing me right now. He's blessing each and every one of us. And so God is not cheap. God is not, amen, uh, lacking of anything. What you need, God got it. But we have to follow the system that God has put in place. And when you follow the system God has put in place, you initiate, you activate your blessings to come your way by giving of your tithes. The minimum of 10%, giving it to the Lord. God, our giving not only honors God, but it changes our hearts and makes deposit in our eternal account. When we give to God, we're making deposits in our eternal account. Only what you do for Christ will last. You're making a deposit in your eternal account, not in your account at Regions Bank or whatever bank, Truist Bank, whatever bank you bank at, or uh, First State Bank or whatever bank you use, amen. But you make it in a, a deposit in your eternal account. And I come to tell you, that's the account that really counts. Amen. It's having, amen, something in your eternal account. Amen. Put your time in now because payday shows is coming after a while. But it also funds the mission. When we give our tithes and we give our offering, it also funds the missions to change lives, to help lives. Even on tonight, as we sit here, amen, and, and, and be able to come to you by the way and the means that we're able to come to you, these these opportunities, these opportunities cost uh, funds and cost money to bring things and to bring things forth to be able to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ, to reach out to you, you, and especially to you. Amen. Before the pandemic, before 2019, uh, people hardly ever... Amen. Tune in on Facebook to get a word. They might skim by and look by, but now they draw from it because why? Amen. The pandemic came along and changed things in such a way that we had to find other avenues to get the word out and to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we're thankful for this avenue. But these uh, avenues uh, cause you have so much of them cost that, but it costs you to amen get internet. It costs you to, to get a device that can uh, that can. Uh, Utilize these uh, te this technology. So the, God is blessing us in so many ways. And so these, uh, by giving of our tithes and our offering, it makes available these means of technology and the means of media that is available to us now. Uh, Facebook and uh, conference calls and Zoom meetings and uh, internet uh, live streams from our sanctuaries and so forth and things of that sort. It, it, this is an opportunity that puts in funds to be able to do the things that we're able to do for the work of the ministry. The tithe goes to the local church, to the local church. You know, some people want to send their tithes as some preacher way over there in California, New York, and Canada, and over in Africa and that. That's fine and good that you can send them an offering. But your tithe need to go to the local church. Local church, you you need to be connected to a local church when you're giving your tithe and offering. There's nothing wrong with giving an offering to to some other ministry. I said offering, 
I didn't say tired. You're tired, you need to go to the local church. Will you be in fear? Will you be in lead? Will you be in guided? Will you be instructed? Amen. As the church accomplishes what God's calls the body to accomplish, money towards those efforts come from somewhere, and it comes from the tithe. Like I said earlier, uh, people in general, I don't, it's, this is my belief that I believe that we all have to be paying or giving tithe. As some people say giving, paying, paying. I, I say giving. I, I, I say giving, giving tithes, uh, and you know, and we selling chicken dinners to pay the mortgage on the church. It ought to come from the tithe. If we're giving our tithes, I like we should, and like we're responsible. Christians are supposed to, and we give to the local church. There's not a need for us, amen, to be giving, selling chicken dinners to pay the mortgage of the church. We ought to be getting that from the tithe. Now, like I said, if you want to do something for the young people and they want to go somewhere and do something outside of the church, or, or from uh, uh, Disney World or uh, 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 Six Flags or somewhere else, or even the trampoline place, recall, or something they want to do on the outside of the church, uh, that can be different, a fundraising thing. But for the, to take care of the church and the ministry of the church, it ought to come from the tithe. And that's why it's important that we, as local people, give our tithes to the local church. The preacher in California not coming to your bedside to pray for you. Amen. They're not going to come and visit you in the hospital room or nursing home. Or they're not going to come, amen, when you have a death in your family. Tithing is for the local church. And just a reminder, Christians ought to be called to be a part of a local church. I encourage you, if you out there, you listening in on the night, if you're not a part of a local church, get connected to a Bible-believing, Holy Spirit-led god ordained ministry church you need to be a part of a church where God's called a body to accomplish money toward those efforts comes from the time we need to be connected all of us have roles to play in the church and in our community as God commands not just a suggestion but God says amen forsake not the assembling of yourself we need to come together as one body and one group and one people to worship God in one spirit and one place. It's something about when we all get together in one place, in one mind, and one spirit, God can move and God can heal and God can deliver and God can set free. So I encourage you, if you're not a part of a local assembly, a part of a local church, get connected to one that is Bible-believing, spirit-led, amen, and ordained by God, amen, and be a part of a local church. We are called to be in a community with others, not living our lives in isolation. We're, part, we're supposed to be one with another. Keep in mind, this, this isn't giving God his money in tithing. This is not giving God his money. This already, this already God's money. This is our reminder whose money it is. It's already God's money. And we ought to give God what's due unto him. Amen. What? It's just a minimum of our team. I'm getting ready to close, but I do want to say Matthew 6 and 19 verses uh, 19 through 21. That's St. Matthew 6 chapter, verse 19 through verse 21. It says, Lay not up for yourself treasures upon the earth, where moth and rust do corrupt, where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourself treasures in heaven, but lay up for yourself treasures in heaven, whether where neither moth nor rust do it corrupt, and where thieves do not break nor steal. They can't do that in heaven. That ain't gonna happen in heaven. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. My brothers and sisters, I encourage you to I challenge you tonight, in 2024, start it out right and do the right thing and give God what is honor and honor God in giving of your tithes, the minimum of 10%, not from the net, 
but from the cross, the first fruit. Amen. Give it to God. If you haven't started giving yet, why not? You can start now. If you stop, you can start again. And giving God his due tithe. Amen. And what is stopping you from beginning to take steps towards generous giving toward giving of your time? What is stopping you? Don't let the enemy stop you. Don't let him hold up your blessing. Don't let him mess up the system that God has established to be a blessing to you and your seed and your seed seeds and the next generation and the next generation and the next generation. Don't let him stop your blessing. But give freely. Give cheerfully. Give from the heart for God has blessed you. Amen to give. And I guarantee you, God will bless you real good. Can I make one more note before I close the night? You can't really give an offering. You can't really give an offering until you have given your tithes. You can't really give an offering until you have given your tithes. Malachi 3.10 says, bring ye the tithes and the offering. Bring ye the tithes and the Amen. So you really can't give an offering until you give your tithes. Offerings are the bonus round of giving. Offerings are the bonus round of giving. And maybe the Lord allows we'll go into offerings at another time. But I really wanted to focus on tithes on tonight of us giving our tithes. My giving was our subject for tonight. My giving. I'm talking about you. You and especially you. Let us honor the Lord in our giving in 2024. And we'll see what amazing things that God can do. God bless you. Heaven keep you is my prayer. There might be one tonight that know the Lord and the partner you're seeing. And just simply need a man to come to Jesus. I invite you to accept Jesus Christ into your life. So will you pray this prayer with me? Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive for all my sins and my transgression. Lord, I'm godly sorry for all I've done wrong and all I have sinned against you. Father, I receive you as my Savior. I believe that you died for me, was buried in a grave, and was risen from the grave and coming back again for me. I receive you into my heart, my mind, my soul, and my spirit. Lord, I want to live for you. I want to be your child. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you. And thank you for being with us on tonight for another Wednesday Night Word at the Greater Mount Carey Missionary Baptist Church located 3835 Whitewater Road right here in the city of Valdosta, Georgia. Make it your business to meet us on Sunday at Mount Carey at 8 a.m. at our in-person service. And you will see what the Lord can do bless you. Heaven keep you is our prayer. Let us close. Father, we thank you. Father, we give you praise. We thank you for the opportunity to come and share your word with your people on tonight and let them know that they have a personal a personal mandate, a personal word to give unto you. And God, you'll do some things awesome, extraordinary, above and beyond that they could even imagine or think in their lives, even now, Lord Jesus. And God, we thank you for all these that tune in, those that will tune in. May it bless them, Lord God, in their endeavors. Let this word not go out void, but let it prick the hearts of your people to be obedient to your word. And Lord, we give your name the praise, we give your name the glory, and we give your name the honor. We bless you on tonight. Look on those that are sick, those that are shut in, those that stand in need of special prayer. Look on those that are bereaved, oh Father God, touch them, oh God, in their hour of loss. And we give your name the praise and the glory and the honor. And we thank you for all things. In Christ Jesus' name we do pray. Amen and amen. And now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest you in the Bible is henceforth now and forever. And all God people say, Amen. And remember, you don't have any trouble, but all you need is faith in God. Until the next time, be blessed and highly favored of the Lord. God bless you.